Hey friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today I want to discuss pre-fader metering and what it actually does in Logic Pro. You know, there's so much confusion and misunderstanding about what this mode and function does. And there are a lot of folks online from YouTube to websites and blogs that will insist if you're recording or mixing or doing anything in Logic, you should absolutely only be metering with pre-fader metering turned on as if it's some sort of secret detail that will just be a game changer for your workflow. And I hate to break it to you, but pre-fader metering is not all it's being made out to be. It's really simple in its functionality, but again, a lot of misunderstanding. So I want to show you right now with some clear, simple audio examples what this mode and function does. So let's dig into it. Now, first, let's go to the control bar right in the top in Logic. Either hold control and click, or by right-clicking an empty section in the control bar, we're going to bring up this menu and click on Customize Control Bar and Display. And right under Modes and Functions, we have an option to introduce or remove various modes and functions, but specifically pre-fader metering. And as you can see, this button right here with what looks like a level meter and a fader in it is being both hidden and reintroduced to the control bar. Once introduced, let's open the mixer. And when I click on pre-fader metering, we'll see that the level meter and the fader are flipping positions. And this is to indicate to us that the level that's being read on the meter is either after the fader or before it. That's what pre-fader metering means, before the fader. In a nutshell, pre-fader metering means that all the level meters in the mixer and the inspector will tell us the level of our track before any fader adjustments. So if our track is peaking at about negative six on the level meter, if we make an adjustment with the fader, we will not see an increase or decrease in level on the level meter itself. However, if we turn off pre-fader metering, we will see an increase or decrease based on our fader adjustments. But where a lot of folks get confused is that they believe that pre-fader metering tells you what the level is of your tracks before your plugin processing. In other cases, folks believe that pre-fader metering is required or necessary when you're recording audio into your projects because the level meters will misrepresent the recorded audio if you adjust their fader position. And this is simply not the case as well. So I'll start to dig into some audio examples of pre-fader metering in Logic Pro. At the moment, I have my guitar plugged into my audio interface. It's ready to be recorded into this project. To keep things simple, I'm not gonna load pedal board or amp designer or anything else. What I will load onto this guitar track to demonstrate pre-fader metering is a gain plugin. Cool, let's move the gain plugin and also make the guitar track just a little bigger so we can see the audio. And we're going to pay special attention to the level meters in our project. First things first, we're going to turn on software monitoring. And let's record enable this guitar track. I'm just going to play a simple A chord. And I'm just going to try to strum it consistently. And we're going to take a look at the level on the level meter for this audio track and where it's hitting. At this moment, we have not turned on pre-fader metering. All right, so we can see that we're peaking at about negative 5.8 on the level meter for our guitar track. If we turn on pre-fader metering in this project, and if I play my guitar again, the level should be roughly the same. Okay, cool. So we're about still negative 5.8. Just to be sure, let's turn off the little tag and play once more. Okay, roughly the same level. Now, pre-fader metering, as I expressed before, is a level meter before any fader adjustments. With this particular track, we've record enabled it. So if I make any sort of fader adjustment, the assumption is, is that the level meter will not change its reading because I've dropped the level of the fader down by almost 24 decibels. So let me try playing right now. Okay, that seems to be the case, right? We're hitting negative three, we're even louder. I'm hitting those chords really hard. So clearly the fader has not impacted our level meter. So we know our loudest level with this guitar track before we start recording or as we're recording. However, if we turn off pre-fader metering, let's take a look at the level of the guitar when I play again. Well, look at that. We're still in the neighborhood of the loudest guitar chords that I played between negative three and negative five. So as you can see, even with pre-fader metering disabled, this adjustment of the fader by negative 24 decibels 
has no bearing on the level that we see on the level meter itself. The point is, regardless if pre-fader metering is turned on or left off, you can trust the level meter on your audio tracks channel strip to tell you the exact recording level for your audio signal. As record enabled tracks in Logic default to telling you the recording level and not the fader level or mixing level or processing level at all. Now, of course, you might be thinking, well, Chris, you don't have any plugin processing on this channel strip. Okay, fine. This fader adjustment has no bearing on what the level meter is telling you, but what about your plugins? Well, that's a great point. That's why in this case, I've loaded a gain plugin and I'm going to reduce the level of my audio track by 96 decibels. So basically, I've essentially muted my guitar so we won't hear it through Logic Pro software monitoring. You may hear the guitar through my microphone, but the point is, as I start to strum my guitar, we won't hear it in Logic, but let's take a look at what the level meter is going to show us. Well, look at that. We don't hear the guitar through the software mixer, yet we still see the actual recording level for this guitar, regardless of the gain plugin and regardless of the fader adjustment. I mean, if you add up the fader adjustment and the gain adjustment, that's negative 120 decibels. But the point is the level meter in Logic for record enabled tracks is still going to show us the actual recording level for our audio tracks. So again, if we turn on pre-fader metering in Logic, we should see no difference in terms of the measured level. Right? So we can see the recording level on our record enabled channel strip, which is really important because we want to make sure we're not too loud to the point where we're clipping, but we're not seeing any action on the stereo output meters, which makes sense because we're not hearing our guitar through Logic Software Mixer because we've turned down the gain and the fader. From here, we need to talk about input monitoring because it is slightly different from record enabling a track. So for this, let's adjust the gain plug into about negative 30. And let's also set the fader back to its original position. And we'll disable record enable and enable input monitoring for our guitar channel strip. And from here, let's bypass the gain plugin and let's strum some chords on this guitar once again. Okay, so negative 9.2, we're in pretty good shape. Now, if we enable this gain plugin on this channel strip with pre fader metering turned off, let's take a look. Okay, we have a drastically different level now for our guitar track. Let's do it once more just to see the actual reading. All right, so we're 30 decibels quieter because of this gain plugin on this channel strip. And we see that level reflected on the guitar channel strip and the stereo output. So what happens if we enable pre-fader metering in this particular situation? Well, going right up to pre-fader metering, let's enable it. And let's take a look at the level meters once more and see what happens. We're still negative 30 decibels lower than before. Pre-fader metering being enabled has no bearing in terms of what level we're seeing on this guitar channel strip. So let's turn off pre-fader metering and adjust the fader for this guitar channel strip. Take a look. Okay, we see no level because I've turned down the guitar completely. Let's now turn on pre-fader metering and take a look. Well then, before we turn on pre-fader metering, we didn't see any level. Whereas when we turn on pre-fader metering, we do see a measured level. And that's because the level meter is telling us the level before the fader adjustment, but not before the plugins. At this point, let's examine pre-fader metering from a different angle with a new drummer track for this project. Let's close the library and the editor. And let's just turn off pre-fader metering for a moment. We have an instance of Kyle with the SoCal kit, Logic's loaded drum kit designer for us, as well as the channel EQ and the compressor. Let's take a quick listen and a look at the level of this drum track as it is right now. Okay, so roughly negative five, negative four dB. If we turn down the fader by about 10 decibels for this drummer track, let's take a look at the level now and where it's reading. So roughly negative 14, negative 15. All right, let's now enable pre-fader metering. And let's take a look again at the level meter. Great, so the stereo output is telling us the exact monitoring level for the drummer track with this 10 decibel reduction, but the level meter for the drummer track itself is telling us the actual level before the fader adjustment because of pre-fader metering. 
With pre-feeder metering left on, let's disable the compressor and open up the channel EQ. From here, I'm going to boost the channel EQ by about 10 decibels. And I'm going to right click on the meter itself in the channel EQ and disable visualize master gain because I don't really like to see the offset of gain. But just know we're boosting the drummer track once again by 10 decibels to offset this 10 decibel reduction on the fader. Now let's take a listen and a look. Okay, so we're reading pretty hot now, 5.3 decibels. So we're seeing the level before the fader, but after the channel EQ's adjustment. If we bypass the channel EQ and take a look, negative 4.6. If we enable the channel EQ once again, all right. If we open the compressor now and reduce the level on the output gain with the compressor by 12 decibels, let's take a listen to what that sounds like and looks like. All right, so even though I've boosted the channel EQ by 10 decibels, I've reduced the level of the track by 12 using the compressor, and we're seeing that level adjustment in pre-fader mode on the level meter, not including the fader adjustment. But if we reintroduce the fader adjustment, we're at about a measured peak level of negative 17 on the meters for this drummer channel strip. So again, pre-fader metering tells you the level of your tracks before any fader adjustments, but not before any plug-in processing. This might lead you to ask, what is pre-fader metering exactly good for? Well, as I demonstrated with the channel EQ, just assuming the compressor doesn't have this input metering built into the plugin itself, if we take a listen and a look, we can see because of my channel EQ adjustment in terms of gain that we are way too hot and we're at risk of clipping our track either at the stereo output stage or driving too much level into subsequent plugin processing, which can have a negative effect depending on what kind of plugins you're loading onto your channel strips. In this case, Logic is letting us know that we might want to turn down the level of our track because we're exceeding zero dB on the channel strip. So if we go back to the channel EQ, let's set the gain slider back to Unity, go back to the compressor, enable it, and let's take a listen and a look once more. All right, cool. So now we're at negative 16.7 with the compressor. So let's boost that back up. We're now at negative five when we make that adjustment to the compressor's level. And if we turn off pre-fader metering and take a look, we're at negative 15 because of this fader adjustment, because now the level meter is reading the level after the fader adjustment. In a nutshell, pre-fader metering allows you to keep an eye on the levels of your tracks throughout your projects as you start to introduce plugin processing because plugins might introduce a boost in level or reduction and you might want to keep an eye on that. But pre-fader metering is pre-fader before any fader adjustments, not pre-plugin processing. However, if you have an audio track or a software instrument track that doesn't have any plugin processing, well, then you're just looking at the pure level of that audio region or the pure level from that software instrument based on where the level is set in the software instrument. And when it comes to audio tracks that are record enabled, Logic Pro will always tell you the actual recording level of that audio track, regardless of fader adjustments, regardless of plugin processing, and regardless if pre-fader metering is enabled or disabled. And input monitoring enabled tracks will respect pre-fader metering in terms of it will tell you the level after the plugin processing and before the fader adjustment. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting you videos, emails, or posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.